Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of How to Cut Gemstones, we will be featuring sapphire that comes from Madagascar from the Ilakaka Mines. To let you know where this sapphire came from, I'll drop in some photos and a general map of where the Ilakaka Mines are and what the mines look like. The source of the Ilakaka Sapphire was discovered in southern Madagascar in the late 1990s. Until then, Ilakaka was little more than a truck stop with a small collection of huts and a few dozen residents. When word of the Sapphire discovery got out, Ilakaka swelled to tens of thousands of residents and this sleepy hamlet became the sapphire capital of the world, supplying nearly 50% of all the sapphires in the world. So this particular gem I'm going to facet has a flaw on the outer surface as you can see, but I want to make sure that there are no internal flaws. So I've got it in some benzyl benazate at the moment, which I use as an immersion fluid. And the reason why I use benzyl benazate is two reasons. It has a very high refractive index, higher than wintergreen oil, and it has no odor. So I have it out of the immersion fluid and it looks really nice and clean internally, which is a good thing. Here are a few close-up photos of the gem I'm going to facet and I'll put in some subtitles of the actual size and carat weight. It looks really big in these photos but in reality it's a lot smaller. Before I start faceting there is a little bit of prep work to do. I've got a permanent marker and just marked the outer perimeter of the gem and this is the areas I want to remove when I round out the gem and it gives me an idea of the center of the gem because I'll be cutting around brilliant design. For the benefit of new viewers I usually add this into my videos. This is the first transfer. What I need to do is glue the gem to a brass stop stick. I let it set overnight in the transfer jig and here the following day the gem is attached to the brass stop stick and then it'll be placed into the quill of the fastening machine. I thought I would start this project by using a brand new disc and I'm using a 3000 grit diamond disc which essentially is a pre-polished disc. And you're probably thinking to yourself well why is this guy using such a fine disc on such a hard gem like sapphire which has a Mohs hardness of 9 out of 10 on the scale. So the thing is with most precious gems like sapphires they tend to be quite small. Most faceters usually cut sapphires that are 1.5 to about 4 carats and once they get over 4 carats they start becoming a relatively large sapphire. So because of the nature of this small sapphire you would literally tear it off if you were using a really coarse disc like 100 or 240 because you're talking about a very small surface area where the gem is attached to the dop stick. As a side note, this particular disc I'm using is a cheap Chinese disc. I buy them in packs of four and the sizes range from a 3000 grit to a 600 grit. And I found them to be quite good. In point of fact, I found them to last just as long as a more expensive disc. Anyway, let's talk about faceting. What I'm doing here, I'm rounding out the gem. This will remove the outside floor that you saw earlier on, and it will also establish a girdle width or size of the gem. So the protractor arm is set at 90 degrees and the index wheel is free spinning and here you can see I've done a general rounding out of the gem. Now that the gem has been rounded out the next step is to create or cut the pavilion and I'm cutting a standard round brilliant and I'll drop in some photos of what that design looks like but I've set the protractor angle here at 45 degrees and then We'll lower the protractor arm down so it's just about to touch the disc and we'll start cutting.
So the first set of pavilion facets have been completed using the 3000 grit diamond disc and there's a tiny little chip on the pavilion but I will remove that later on. So the next step in the process is that I've decided to facet a girdle which means I've got to cut 16 facets. Normally a lot of faceters would not go through the effort particularly on a tiny gem as they would just choose to have a continuous girdle which is a round girdle but I think having a faceted girdle looks a lot classier and a sapphire is a classy gem. So my world as a gem cutter is continually looking through a loop like this and that means cutting a little bit or grinding a little bit and then looking closely through that loop. Here you can see that I've finally cut the girdle facets and it's really important that each one of these facets have correct meat points. So this is a very important step is to polish the girdle facets. A lot of faceters don't do this and particularly those who are faceting within the jewellery industry. They take these little shortcuts but once again a polished girdle in my opinion looks a lot classier. Sometimes you can't do it, sometimes there might be an issue with the girdle or the gem is way too brittle and it may chip the girdle by polishing it. To polish the girdle facets I'm using a 50,000 grit diamond compound on a tin lap and in this scene you can see that I've polished the outside of the girdle. So the next step is to cut the next tier of pavilion facets and to do this the angle of the protractor arm is set at 43 degrees. I thought I would mention also that when you're fastening such tiny gems it's really important to use a very light touch. If you go in too heavy and press too hard it's a very good chance that the gem will tear off the dop stick. In the following scenes you'll see that I have cut the second set of pavilion facets. So now it's time to polish all those pavilion facets and once again I'm using a tin lap with a 50,000 grit diamond compound. In the following scenes you'll see the stages of the completed polished pavilion facets. On to part two which is faceting the crown and we have the secondary transfer of the gem which is gluing another dop stick onto the gem and retaining it within the transfer jig overnight and then removing the original dop stick and I usually use a scalpel blade to do this. So the protractor angle is set at 47 degrees ready to cut the first set of crown facets. I'll be cutting these crown facets to a certain depth to create a nice even girdle outline. Just a few ramblings while I'm about to cut the crown. I thought I would say that sapphire is a classy gem but it's not my favourite gem to facet. I actually prefer faceting topaz and zircon and then probably specetite in that order. 
Sapphire is a little bit on the pricey side. Usually you pay about $100 per carat for high quality rough, and that's US, and then you can add two and a half to three times on top of that once it's cut. So it makes it quite an expensive gem. And of course, once you start getting into the larger sapphires, like seven millimeters to 10 millimeters, you're talking you know, extra prices just for size alone. Anyway, I've cut the first set of 16 facets and I've created an even girdle outline and I've left this girdle outline a little bit thicker because I intend to have it set and most jewelers or people who set gems prefer to have a thicker girdle so it doesn't chip. So on to the final step which is polishing the crown after I've just cut them. So I'm adding sewing machine oil, a couple of drops and lightly just rub the oil onto the surface of the tin lap. I'm just using some toilet paper, you can use tissue paper. And then I will add the 50,000 grit diamond compound and then start polishing the facets in order from the crown facets first tier, then I'll facet the second tier of crown facets the star facets and last but not least the table. So after I've smeared on the 50,000 grit diamond compound I'm gently going to lower the fastening head onto the surface of the disc and just swipe it a few times to see that the surface of the first facet I'm going to polish is evenly touching that disc. Doing this will leave a tiny little bit of a smear mark on your disc from the oil and then you can look on the underside of the facet to see where the contact point is. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished all the crown facets as I've mentioned before in the particular order from the base of the crown, from the girdle, all the way up to the table. And when you're polishing you're actually squeezing or polishing facets into a meat point. And sometimes the star facets don't quite line up but you can actually polish those in to meet the second tier of facets and of course then you polish your table. So we're getting closer to the end of this video, which means we have the final reveal, just seeing what the gem looks like once it's out of the dop stick. And I always find that filming tiny gems for the final reveal is really difficult. It seems that the smaller the gem is, it's harder to get the camera at the right angle to film it close up. And I'm no expert in photography or camera work, but for me, I've always found this a bit of a challenge, mostly on the smaller gems. In closing, I would like to say thank you to all my subscribers and those people who watch my channel and support my channel. Please leave some comments, please like and subscribe. And also, I'd like to thank those people who left me some ideas for future videos. So take care everybody, and it's bye for now.